Greetings, everyone. How you all doing? This is my squirt bottom because my cats like to do what they want to do. And then this is how I get them back in line. Um, so today is the day that the sun governs and the sun is currently at the 24th degree of Libra. And um, the 24th degree of Libra for the sun is where Mercury started its retrograde. <laughs> So, you know, I'm still on this Mercury retrograde thing because um, I don't really know what else to talk about. It's it's um, what it has been doing to me is so extreme and the most but deeply subtle, but extreme. So I am um, I'm just I'm damn near obsessed with it. But that makes sense because Pluto is the backdrop of this retrograde and Pluto is all about obsessions. Um, so today, like I said, Libra, the sun is in Libra. The sun governs the day. Um, the sun is in a square with Pluto, which is, like I said, where the Mercury retrograde started and in a trine with Jupiter. So that gives us some grace. The Jupiter energy gives us a little bit of softness and grace and expansion along with the depths that are occurring. Um, so Libra governs relationship and in astrology in western astrology they say oh libra governs your relationship with one other person in the seventh house is the house that rules libra venus is the planet that rules libra and um and it's really about relationship entirely it's not with other it's not necessarily just about people it can be your relationship with your cell phone your relationship with um your government, your relationship with, it's its your relationship, it's how you relate. And that is something that we have to really look within ourselves to understand. Because one of the things that many of us do is we give our power away to authority. And that's what Pluto and Capricorn is destroying. It's destroying the way we give our power away to authoritative figures teachers, ministers, spiritual ideas like Christianity, Islam, all of those that that's that is external authority. And um and the 24th degree is humility. And humility, I've talked about this quite a bit. I will always talk about it when we are at the 24th degree. Humility means recognizing your connection to the whole, your value with the whole, right? So it's like my hand has to recognize, and I'm just using this as an example, that it is impacting my whole body. It's not, you know, if I didn't have this hand, it would change the way my body related and the way that I thought and the way that I function. Everything is impacting everything else. And it's important at this juncture with Mercury and retrograde, for us to everybody to realize their own power, everyone to realize their own significance, everyone to realize their own authority, right? And not give your authority away. So one of the ways that we do it, like right now, this big conversation around the virus, right? And do we just give our power away to what the medical field says and what the and what the um the pharmaceuticals want us to do or do we do our own work and ask the deeper questions for ourselves what is the best solution the best line of action for each individual you've got to recognize that whatever choice you're making it either strengthens the whole or it weakens the whole um can i recommend yes it's called invisible garment the book is called Invisible Garment that talks about degrees. So you want to re you want to do the work while we are in the final stages of Mercury retrograde. Yay! <laughs> you want to do the work. So we have two more days of retrograde, and then 
Mercury will go direct at the 10th degree and then travel back to the 24th degree in the shadow. If you didn't understand, like I think yesterday I talked about how the retrograde really works. You can go look at one of the, either the yesterday's video, the video before to see what I'm meaning, what I'm saying, but, or you can schedule a Mercury retrograde reading with me. You can go look at my link tree and I'm happy to do a retrograde reading with you to help you see how this retrograde is impacting you and what is really being where you're being sort of forced or given the opportunity to take on new power, to really begin to relate differently than you had been before. This retrograde for me has just wiped out everything. I've become so clear about my childhood patterns and my childhood patterns and how many of my relationships through childhood into adulthood were formulated based upon my idea of what was beautiful in womanhood, right? So because I had a mother who was light-skinned with long hair and because she valued that, that became a part of my value system. But because I, I didn't look like that, I had to, like I was really abandoning myself. I didn't think I was beautiful. I didn't think I was um, valuable because of the environment I grew up in. And that was the formulating impact of the way I related to people. I, I related based upon not feeling good about myself, not feeling whole, not feeling necessary. And then I would make friends with people who looked the way I thought was valuable based upon the cultural narratives around, you know, if you look white, then you were beautiful, right? And I shared before that I had a grandmother who was the product of rape and she was light skinned with long hair. And that was very valuable in my family. So just those inner, those inner dialogues, those inner things that really are, th that we project out, make choices. Um, and, oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much that we make choices. So this Mercury retrograde has helped me see the programming and what I bought into and how it was not really working in my life or how it was working in my life so that I can now reconstruct it, right? And this is what we all get to do. But it does depend on where the retrograde is happening in your in your chart. So if you have a Libra rising, then it's happening in your identity. If you have Libra in the second house, then it's happening in your money, in your work. If you have Libra in the third house, it's happening in the way you think and the way you process information. If it's happening in your fourth house, it's happening in your emotional world deep inside. Like you are having um, a lot of feelings and things about relationships. If it's happening in your fifth house, then it's happening, it's impacting your pleasure and your sexual and romantic relationships. If it's happening in your sixth house, it's impacting your work and the things you do on a daily basis, the people you're with on a daily basis. If it's happening in your seventh house, then like it is for me, it's the way you relate to everything. Just your relationship structures are changing. If it's happening in your eighth house, it's impacting your, um, your sexuality and, and it's transforming you at a very deep level that is probably like really reorganizing your relationships. Um, and also your in the way you relate to your family because the eighth house also governs that. If it's happening in your ninth house, the ninth house is the house that governs your global identity, your faith, and um, your faith, your vision, the way you, I'm sorry, I'm about to squirt my cat because she about to, okay. <laughs> your vision and um, yeah, like who you are more, your relationship to the divine, right? If it's happening in your 10th house, it's impacting your career, how you show up in your career and, and asking you to be more than you've been, not to take the background. If it's happening in your 11th house, it's impacting your friendships, your um, community organizations, and your unique ways of being. And if it's happening in your 12th house, it's impacting you subconsciously, which means that it's very subtle right now, but it'll show up. <laughs> it'll show up sooner or later. So um, we're all being asked to make some new changes, to shift our lives and the way we relate. And whatever it's showing up for you, 
you know, I just encourage you to let go and go with it. That's what I'm doing because I don't really have any other choice, honestly. Um, but it's pretty good. Like I'm not, I'm not, um, like I'm cranky. I'm, I'm extraordinarily cranky. Like I'm not friendly or fun to be around, but it's, you know, like, it's like going to the dentist and getting your teeth clean, right? Like, okay, I need to do this. So I'm doing it. I just, and I'm grateful for doing it. It just doesn't feel good. And so I'm just allowing that to be. And I'm being really, really present, as present as I can in the moment. Like not, not allowing myself to do a lot of future fantasizing, not allowing myself to do a lot of past thinking. And the people that are showing up in my consciousness, I'm just blessing them and sending love because I know that the energy is very strong right now. And... If I can feel people, I know people can feel me. So I'm just trusting the process. So with that, you all, I love y'all very much. Oh, where's the moon? Oh, the moon is in Pisces. <laughs> the moon is in Pisces, which is the energy of the subconscious. So we really are in a deeply connected space. And um, if you have the desire, one of the things about Pisces is just to use your imagination, see things as you desire them, feel it, imagine yourself into the way that you desire to be. I'm not doing any of that right now. I'm just being present. I'm just being present. Like, I'm here. Can I be at peace with being here right now? If nothing ever changes, that's one of the things I like to say to myself. If nothing ever changes, can I be grateful for everything the way that it is? And that's what I'm giving myself permission to do because I know that in the moment, in the presence, is where we really activate our power. And so... um so yeah, so that's that. If I can support anybody, I'm you know I'm happy to do so. You can book a reading. Um, I wanted to thank everybody for the donations and the thanks and all that sort of stuff. I just want y'all to know that stuff matters to me so much. I'm a Virgo. I need to know that what I'm doing has impact. And if I don't know that, then I won't do it. <laughs> so thank you for everyone who sends me the messages and you know shows me how what I'm sharing is helping because the stuff that I share is so personal. Like I really feel like I'm navel picking sometimes and and I don't really love to be this vulnerable. Honestly, I don't. But I do it because I really feel like had I had somebody do this when I was younger, it would have changed the trajectory of my life. Though I have no regrets, I just know that I suffered a lot. But then I have Pluto conjunct my son. So suffering is a part of that. So anyway, but had I known that Pluto conjunct my son meant suffering, I may not have been so dramatic in the suffering. I may have just been like, oh, this is uncomfortable. But because I didn't know that Pluto, I didn't understand astrology, I took it all so personally. And I was suicidal for years, for years. I think I stopped thinking about killing myself when I was probably 30 when my son was born, I really stopped when my son was born. But when I started to started studying astrology, I realized that was Pluto. Pluto was killing me, <laughs> killing aspects of me, killing my ego, killing, but I didn't understand. So I took it to mean that I really wanted to die when of course that's not what I wanted. I really just was being um, stripped of ego structures. So this is why I do this, so I can support us and anybody who desires it and understanding that there is an energy, there is the things that we can't see, the energy that is really the activating force of all of these experiences we're having. And my intention in having conversations about the astrology is to highlight what energies are present so that we can know not to take it personal, so that we can be with the feelings, be with the experiences without them totally annihilating us. So thank you for being here and thank you for allowing me to be supportive because God knows I actually also need something to do that feels of value. <laughs> all right, you all have a beautiful day. Peace and blessings. I'm the moon mama. I love you. Bye-bye.